Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm so excited to teach this class. Um, Tumblr making is a huge trend in the craft industry and um, it's a lot of fun. Um, and I'm really excited to introduce you to some of these uh, cool products that Michaels carries. Talk about the Spinit program a little bit and um, just talk about some basics of Tumblr making um, and some tips for using resin and um, making cool stuff. So um, welcome everyone. Let's see. Let me just take a peek at my laptop and close that. All right. Okay. Hopefully. Yep. Okay. I think we're ready. All right, guys. So my name is Allie Dosdell and I um, work for We Are Member Keepers. I guess you could say I'm their spokesperson. I'm kind of the face of the brand and I have the lucky job of being able to um, teach and um, train and um, share about uh, the We Are Member Keepers products. Um, the Spin It program is one of my favorite programs that we've done um, and we are super proud of and grateful for our partnership with Michaels in bringing this wonderful program to crafters. Um, it was the first um, dedicated tumbler machine uh, brought to craft stores. Also our um, glitter was the first bulk uh, glitter offering in craft stores and so we're really proud that we were able to kind of spearhead the way for this uh, amazing craft to, to uh, make its way into Michael's stores. Um, so let me talk a little bit about the Spin It program. Um, we have the Spin It machine. That's kind of the, the crux of the program is this wonderful tool that allows the um, your cups to spin so that the um, resin can cure evenly and beautifully. Um, this is what the arm looks like that comes with the tool when you purchase it, but we also developed a new arm and base. Um, and this is great if you'd like to do hydro dipping, which is basically um, spray painting in water, different colors, and then dipping the cup in and kind of getting different colors of paint on it. And that this makes it easy to do. Um, it also kind of protects your machine so it doesn't get um, resin on it. So great arm to use that's purchased separately. Um, we also have a new offering of glitter mixes. Um, these are absolutely beautiful um, and there's a whole bunch of them. So I recommend looking at those. They're, different size glitters and different colors that mix beautifully together. Um, we also have, let's see, oh, up here, um, we have thermal and solar powders. So you can mix color in with your resin um, and they change colors when they're exposed to heat or, or the sun. There's also glow in the dark glitter. Um, anyway, there's just a bunch of really cool things. So check it out on their website. We're gonna work with some of the solar and the um, thermal powders today. We're gonna work with this glitter mix um, today, which is the fairy dust. And we're also going to work with, um, we developed some molds, um, molds for coasters and molds for um, pendants. So if you want to make jewelry, and that's a great way to use up your leftover resin. So sometimes when you mix resin, you might end up with a little bit left over and you hate to waste that. So we've developed some ways to use that up so you don't feel like you're wasting your product. So, all right, let's get started. We're gonna make a mica swirl tumbler. Mica means just the powders that add the color to your resin. Um, and so what we first do is we're gonna take the tumbler, um, and this is the one that's available at Michael's, it's the Art Mites tumbler. And this, um, I always start by spray painting with a coat of white paint. The paint that I used um, was the Rust-Oleum Primer and Paint in One in the white color. Um, if you know you're going to make your tumbler, uh, you know, a one solid color, you can always kind of do a color that's more closer to your glitter color. But glitter is translucent. You can see through it. So if you don't coat it with paint, you're going to see that silver stainless steel color right through there. So it's always good to paint first. That kind of creates your canvas there for coloring. I also tape off the bottom here. Um, so that way that, you know, it, that your cup will sit flat. You know, you don't have to worry about the resin kind of making your tumbler a little bit uneven when it sits flat. Um, some people like to tape off the top here and have silver on both sides. Um, I, I don't, I like to have color all the way up to the top, so it's just up to you. Um, the one thing we do need to do with this is tape the inside, and I actually think I put my tape away, so give me one second and I'm gonna go grab that, my apologies. Um, but I tape the inside of that just because that way you don't get resin inside the cup. Um, if you don't do that, you'll get some inside and then you'll have to scrape it out, um, and it's kind of a pain. So. Um, what I do is because it's round, I do small pieces um, and I tape it this way. So I just go like this 
um, and just do that all the way around small pieces so that it can fit to the shape of the cup that also will protect your um, machine a little bit as well so that's smart and I am using masking tape you can use painters tape um, I find that washi tape is not generally not quite tacky enough for this project um, so I wouldn't recommend washi tape for this but again just protecting surfaces and in addition to protecting the cup um, you're going to want to protect your work surface. I don't, you probably can't see, but I've got like a plastic tarp, like a painting cover on there. Um, Michael's has our, um, our prep kit and the prep kit includes a plastic cover for your work surface. It includes gloves, it includes mixing cups and mixing sticks and like everything you need to make a tumbler and prepare your surface. All right, I'm gonna just kind of fold that down a little because it might be too big. All right, so then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this onto my, um, my spinet machine. Now this um, spinet machine is adjustable. You just turn this knob here and this will um, enlarge or you know, narrow so that you can fit almost any kind of cup on here, any size. Um, we don't recommend um, using cups that weigh more than 12 ounces or that are larger than 18 ounce cups that, that hold more than 18 ounces. So the weight is 12 ounces, that's the limit, and the cup size is an 18 ounce cup size. This is lower than that, so we're good, um, but that's the limits on the machine. So we're gonna just put this on, and let me just mention here, this for some crafters can be kind of a frustrating moment, so be patient. Um, it does work, you just have to kind of get it right. And what I like to do is I like to get these ridges, let me back it up a little bit, these ridges right here, just on the, the inside lip of the cup, right there. And that works really well. So, um, and every cup is shaped differently, every tumbler is shaped a little differently. So, you know, you're gonna kind of need to take some time to figure that out. And then what I do is I turn it on, and, and by the way, guys, what I love about this is it's a USB machine. So um, you can plug it into your phone charger, you can plug it into the wall with an adapter. Um, and so that's really handy, so you can take it with you and create on the go. So I'm gonna turn this on and test, and what we need to do is make sure that this tumbler is straight on there, because if it's, wobbly um you're gonna have problems with your resin curing so we just kind of watch now see it's kind of wobbly so i'm going to shift it just a little bit still crooked so this is a little bit of a process and that's okay just be patient with it because it eventually works out almost there might go a little further in that might be the issue okay that was just about it one more tweak. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, perfect. All right, the other issue that can happen sometimes is once you get that other uh, resin on there, um, and you wanna be careful not to put too much because it will weigh your cup down and it will drip off and all kinds of things will start to pool. Um, but one thing you can do is if you find that your cup starts getting heavy and kind of pulling down, you can put something underneath the machine I'm going to do this preventatively because I know that this particular cup with the resin on it is going to weigh down a bit. So you put something underneath the machine to just even it out so that it's level. Everything needs to be straight and level. So let me just take one more look at that before we start. Make sure that's good. Because once you get it on there, it's not going anywhere and, and you're going to be happy. Okay. So now we're ready to mix some resin. So I'm using the Alumalite resin. This is my favorite resin to work with. It just cures beautifully. It's easy to use. It's high gloss. It looks stunning. Let me just show you the cup um, to look at that shine. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and this is kind of what we're going to create. And the cool thing about this technique is each cup is a little different. You're going to get a little bit of a different look each time. All right, so I'm going to put some gloves on. I recommend nitrile gloves. Um, and if you're going to do a lot of resin crafts, um, I recommend buying these in bulk. They're much cheaper that way. They're, they're not very expensive anyway, but um, buy them in bulk. And when you're creating um, a, a cup with multiple colors of resin, I recommend having maybe three to five pairs of gloves ready on hand because you're going to need to change them out a little bit here and there. And also have a stack of paper towels ready to go just in case. 
Um, that's always a good plan. All right, so we're gonna um, mix the resin now. And so there are two bottles of resin. There's the A side and the B side. One of these is the resin and the other one's the hardener. Um, and so we're going to do, what we're gonna do is mix one part to one part. So you can measure that or you can just use the same cup and fill it up and that's what I'm gonna do. I've got these two little plastic cups here. I'm just gonna fill them each up to the top and then we're gonna mix those together. So I'm gonna just put these right here and we're gonna start with A and just fill this cup up to the top. And many of you probably have questions about safety um, when using resin. And we are gonna go over that um, in a minute as I am working with the cup because we'll have some downtime while it is spinning and while I'm trying to coat it with the, the primer coat. So we will address that because that's important. So there's my A, part A, here comes my B. And I'm filling them just right up to the top. And normally when I work with resin, I just use like a, you know, a Dixie cup or a, you know, just a plastic disposable cup. Um, I've got, I wanted you to be able to see, I wanted something clear so you could see. And so this is just an old plastic cup that I was going to recycle because it's cracked. So I'm going to mix them in there. Um, and I recommend using like, you know, a stir stick, something's disposable that you can just chuck. Um, so we're going to do part A first and then part B. Well, I should probably put that down. And then I use my stick to get as much out as I can because accuracy with this is important. Getting the one-to-one -one ratio is one of the important tips when working with resin. Um, sometimes when you have issues with resin, it's because your ratio is off. So that's a, that's a really good tip is to make sure you are as accurate as you can be with measuring. All right, now part B. And again, just scraping out, getting out as much as I can. Part B is a little bit thinner, so it's a little easier to pour out. Part A tends to want to stick. All right, so I'm gonna stir this up. And what we're looking for, and we're gonna stir slowly, because the faster you stir, the more bubbles you get. The more bubbles you get, the more problems you have. So we're doing a slow stir. And you can see down in there, there's, I hope you can see. Let's see if I can raise this up. There's some swirls. Um, okay, sorry, I'm looking at my laptop trying to get this. There we go. Okay, swirls in there. And you're gonna stir this for two to three minutes. And you can tell it's done when those swirls are all gone. Some people like to say when it turns from cloudy to to clear then it's ready to go um, so and this is another tip um, this is another place where crafters have errors and problems with their resin is they don't stir enough i would rather have you over stir than under stir for sure so make sure you go at least two to three minutes sometimes longer depending on um, the resin and depending on your temperature in the area you're working with and depending on humidity so all right, so a couple tips when you're working with resin, make sure that your area is well ventilated. You have an open window, you have a fan going um, so that you have good ventilation. Um, another tip is avoid contact with your skin. It, it, it can be a skin irritant. Um, so that's why we use the gloves. Always protect your work surface, uh, protect your clothes. That's why I'm wearing an apron. So all that good stuff. Um, okay, we still have swirls. Um, I, funny story, I was uh, doing a demo for this tool and I had a nice pretty shirt on and I had forgotten to bring my apron and one teeny tiny tiny little speck got on my, my blouse right in the front and couldn't get it out. So that, that nice blouse is now ruined. So always protect your clothing. But anyway, so we're going to just keep mixing hair. And what we're going to do with this resin is we're going to divide it up to make different colors. So once we finish with this, we're going to kind of measure out and divide up. Um, another thing that I recommend is scraping the sides and the bottom as you're mixing so you don't have clumps of A or B that stick 
um, you know, to the cup and don't make it in because that will mess with your, your resin curing. All right. I'm still seeing swirls. So we're still mixing. Now you can see some bubbles in there. Um, one thing that's a good tip is there are ways to work with those bubbles after you've mixed it. So you're trying to avoid getting really big bubbles in there, but there's gonna be little ones, you can't really help it. So we've got a fix for that um, once we get going on applying the um, resin. We're almost Lydia, there. Yeah. I have a quick question. If resin gets on, the, on any surface, do you have any tips on how to get it out? Yes, if it's still wet, if it hasn't cured, you can get some um, rubbing alcohol, you can use nail polish remover, um, turpentine, that will help it come off. Um, some surfaces, if you let it cure, it will um, peel off, but mostly not. Like I'll talk about, so silicone is one of those surfaces that it will peel off, um, but like any kind of plastic, it will bond to um, other than silicone. So, all right. I think we're ready. Okay. All righty. So first what we're going to do is uh, these little cups come with the um, resin and it's got milliliter measurements on it. So we're going to do the 2.5, which is right down at the bottom. It's the very lowest. We just need a teeny bit to get started. Um, and what we're going to do is put a primer layer and what that primer layer does is it preps the paint, covers the paint, seals it in, um, and then it also helps um, create a surface where the mica swirls can happen. So, um, and then I'm going to measure out 35 milliliters into one of these cups, um, and we're going to divide that up between different cups. So, another trick is like for a cup this size you're gonna to want to use about 35 milliliters of resin. Any more than that, and you're gonna end up having pooling problems. Um, resin will, will get in places you don't want it. It could end up kind of bulging at the bottom, all kinds of stuff. So you wanna um, make sure you don't use more than about 35 milliliters. Okay, so I'm measuring five, and that way I'll have 35 in there. All right, so I set aside my two and a half milliliters because that's going to stay clear. And now we're going to work with um, this here. And we're going to divide this um, between four cups because we have four different colors. So we're just going to divide it evenly. Um, this, this doesn't need to be exact because you've already poured your resin and, and mixed it up. So we're just going to kind of eyeball this um, and just try to get it as even as possible. So there's, you know, about the same amount of color, the different colors on the, on the tumbler. So I kind of do like an initial pour and then I'll go back and add more if I need to. Um, one thing to note about this resin is you have about a 45 minute open time. The open time means um, that's how much time you have before the resin will start to cure. So that gives you quite a lot of time to work with this, um, which is just what we need for this particular project. All right, so we've got those four ready to go. So we're gonna start adding some color. So this is our eggplant to purple um, thermal. So this is the thermal one. This is the one that we will get to see changing today. All right, so and again, there's no real science about how much of this powder to add to color it. It just it depends on what you like. Um, I would start with a little bit because a little goes a long way and then work from there um, to get your, um, you know, intensity of color. Um, and again, with this, you don't want to mix too fast because that will create more bubbles. And again, scraping the bottom and the sides to make sure there isn't any powder that is not mixed in. This kind of reminds me of making pancakes with my daughter. We always talk about that. <laughs> Scrape the bottom and the sides so all the pancake mix is mixed in. All right, I think that looks pretty good. 
Okay, so there's our purple. Now we're gonna go with a pink. This is pink to um, purple. And this is a solar powder. Right there. So we won't actually get to see this change today, but this goes from pink to purple. So this is such a great project for the summer um, to stay hydrated. And as, if, as we're spending more time outdoors, um, doing activities in the warmer weather. Um, this is kind of a fun way for kids to stay hydrated too because their, their cup, um, cups will change colors um, as they use them outside. So that's kind of fun. Ali, we have another question for you. Is it possible okay. to put fabric or paper on the cup first and then do resin on top? Absolutely, you absolutely can do fabric, you can do paper, you can do water slide paper, which is kind of a way to print on the water slide paper and transfer that print onto the cup. You can use vinyl. Um, there, are, there are a lot of things you can do, paint, um, all kinds of fun stuff. That's a good question. All right, almost done that. It's got a couple little chunks of powder. Okay, next we're gonna go for this one. And I like to add a little white because that kind of gives some contrast, but this is a white to magenta solar powder that's probably a little too much there we go so we'll mix that one up and again that one's one that we won't see the magenta but it looks really cool and and the thing i like about all these colors mixed together is they all really work well together um, and so but there's also some contrast there to make it interesting kind of fun we're going to mix that you can't see any more powder chunks. Get that ready. And like, if you're looking at this, it doesn't look like it's a whole lot. And that's, that's really true. We don't need a whole ton for one tumbler. We don't wanna overrun the cup. Okay, that one's ready. Last one is this beautiful mint to teal. My favorite color. All right. Whoops, forgot my mixing stick. Okay. I'm gonna mix that one up. And you can see as it mixes with the resin, sometimes the color darkens just a bit, but it's still beautiful. Love it. All right. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do once I finish mixing this is we are going to take that two and a half milliliters of clear resin. And we're gonna just use fingers, gloved fingers to apply that. I find that's the easiest way if you're going for like a thin coating to seal in your paint or you know, whatever you're putting on your glitter or your um, fabric or paper, whatever. So you wanna kind of have a sealing on it first, a clear sealing coat. All right, so that's mixed. Oop, nope, some came off the stick, sorry. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're gonna start with this two and a half milliliters. Um, and we're gonna get this cup spinning. And the nice thing about this machine is there, you can adjust the speed, there's a dial. So if you need it to have it going faster for application, you could do that. If you need to slow it down for application or when it's curing, you can do that. So we're gonna kind of turn it up just a little bit because we're just doing a coating. So I'm gonna start by just kind of pouring and then I kind of rub as I go. Um, and this is going to take a few minutes, um, but the cool thing about resin is it levels as it spins and it's kind of self-leveling, so it'll take care of that. But again, we, this is a super thin coat. We just need to make sure that everything's kind of sealed in. So, um, and you just keep working it with your fingers and spreading it around. And you can see like where the resin actually is on the cup because the, the gloss is, you know, it's a more glossy look and the, the paint is kind of a more satin look. So you can tell the difference. You wanna make sure you get it all the way down to the bottom and all the way up to the lip of the cup. I'm just gonna use my finger to get that out. Make sure I've got all of it. All right, so again, I'm just working this around and I don't, I'm not pushing very hard, just kind of sliding back and forth. 
And eventually we'll get every inch of this cup covered with resin and have it all sealed in there before we start adding color. Okay, almost there. Just going back and forth. We close. One more rotation, I think, and then we're good. Okay. All right. So this is the part where we're going to switch gloves. I'm going to take that one off and get a new one. And we're going to give this just a minute to rotate around a few times and let that resin level a little bit before we start putting some color on. All right. And while it's doing that, I just want to talk a minute about some other amazing things you can do with resin. Um, again, we've, we've got the coasters, we've got the pendants. Um, you can make jewelry, um, you can uh, make little toys and little figures, um, bracelets. There's all kinds of things that you can make um, with epoxy resin keychain. Um, so um, it's really fun uh, to work with. And when you're using molds, I recommend using silicone molds because again, that particular um, material just does not bond with the resin. So it, you can just peel that mold right off. So um, that's um, the best way to do it. All right, so that's looking pretty, pretty level there. So I think we're ready to add some color. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to start with the darkest color first and then go up to the lightest. Um, so we're gonna work with the purple first. Um, and again, there's really no science to this. Give me one second, I'm gonna get this mixing stick out. Um, and what I'm gonna use for application is this silicone brush that's part of the spin spinet collection. So the tip of this is silicone and so it won't stick to your, um, your resin. Um, but don't make, just make sure you don't get it up here. I mean, if it's, it's not gonna be the end of the world if it sticks, but it, it won't come off as easily up here. You'll need to use some kind of a, um, a cleaner to get it off while it's still wet. All right, so ready to apply. And you're just going to apply like globs of it in different places, kind of the, the length of the cup so that you get like a nice mix so that you don't have like all the purple at the bottom or all the pink at the top or whatever. Um, so that's kind of what we're going for is just a nice mix of um, where the colors end up because they're not going to stay there. And I do have to say, guys, be patient because this is going to look ugly for a little while. But once we get the heat applied, um, it is going to look fantastic. You're going to be amazed. So bear with me while it's in the ugly stage. All right, let's see. That's probably good for that for now. I, I like to save a little bit for touch-ups once we get all the color on there. So I've set aside just a little bit for the end. All right, next color is the green or the teal and mint. And again, we're just gonna try to like work kind of in between the purple, but also up and down the whole cup. And if they mix, if your colors mix while you're doing this, like they get on top of each other, that is okay. It's not a problem. Just, you know, kind of try to avoid that if you can, but if not, it's not ruined. Allie, I have a couple questions for you. Is now a good time? Now's a great time. Um, first is, do you need to sand the cup before you paint it? Um, I, I did not because the paint that I used is a primer and a paint in one. If you're not going to use a primer, I recommend lightly sanding um, before you apply the paint. But if you've got a primer, you should be just fine. It's not a problem. And if someone were to use alcohol inks, do they need that thin layer of resin, that first thin layer of resin? Um, yes, I would definitely recommend doing that first thin layer of resin to seal in, like, because um, you've painted, and so you want to just seal in that paint. Um, before you add the alcohol inks. Makes sense. And is yes. do you have other brushes that you recommend using to apply 
the colored resin or, you know, other than the silicone brush? Um, yeah, you can totally use the, um, like the mixing sticks that come with the resin kit. Um, those work just fine. Um, I just like to use this because then I'm, I'm not having to replace, you know, lots of mixing sticks. So, I mean, this, this is not uh, required. It's optional. It's just handy to have, but you can totally use the um, popsicle sticks um, that come with it. I know some people like to use a foam paintbrush. So there's other options available. Wonderful. Thank you. Sure. You bet. All right, okay, one more drip down here on the bottom. Okay, and then we'll do some white. Oops. Okay. Um, now, one thing to point out is obviously your, the base of your cup is white. But you're going to be able to see the difference between this white and your your white paint so you can kind of tell where white spots are that where there isn't any coverage versus where you've got your white epoxy if that makes sense so just be aware try try to cover all the like paint white spots because um you know if you don't again totally fine it's like kind of like tie-dye it's like you just get what you get and it's really cool looking but um if you know you're just be aware that your white paint is not going to change color so if you want color changing all over just make sure to use the white on the you know enough so that it covers the white areas so i have another right. question for you ali yeah can you use plastic tumblers for this yes um i know people who do like they take those uh, starbucks cups and just you know cover cover those in glitter and, and resin. So you totally can. All right, so now I'm just gonna kind of go back. Well, this might be good. Let me take another look at it as it's spinning around. Just make sure I've got color kind of evenly, um, but we might be okay. Sometimes I like to go back and like fill in spots where I think there's the color missing, like maybe right here. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, I think I need a little more mint at the top. So I'm going to add a bit of that. And this, again, it's your, you know, your own process. You just kind of get it to where you want it. All right, let's get a little more mint up here. And keep in mind, as your cup is spinning, um, because it's, it's, you know, a cup that tapers down at the bottom, um, the... Uh, resin is going to kind of want to go that direction. So um, make sure you get enough at the top because uh, your resin is sort of going to go towards the bottom of the cup a little bit. So, but if you have enough up at the top, you should be just fine. All right. Okay, I'm happy with that. I am going to start with the heat. Okay, so with the heat, I'm just going to let you know ahead of time. So you can use a heat gun. Um, and this is gonna get loud. I think it, with Zoom, it actually kind of mutes the sound. Um, so this, the next few minutes here is gonna be just watching the process. Um, it takes a few minutes, um, and, but you'll recognize once it starts the swirling motion, you'll see it change and it's gonna look really cool. Right now, it kind of looks weird and ugly, <laughs> but trust me, you're gonna be amazed when it goes to the swirling motion. So I'm just, what I'm gonna do is do a, like a cross like this and we're gonna hold it about four to six inches away and just kind of sweep across like this. If you hold it too close, you're going to prematurely cure the resin and you will lose that nice sheen, that nice gloss. Um, and it might crack and it might bubble and it might have problems. This is actually a great, the perfect way to get rid of all those little bubbles. So even if you're not doing this particular um, technique, if you're just doing a coat of clear resin, just give it a little shot with this and all those little bubbles will pop and you'll have a nice clear um, and smooth resin curing at the end of your project. So now bear with me while I turn this on and just watch the cool process.
Okay. How cool is that? Isn't that awesome? I just love watching that. That's so fun. Um, so I forgot to mention, I did take my brush as I was swirling that um, and just kind of filled in some spots that I noticed did not have um, enough coverage on the resin. Um, and so you can totally do that as you're swirling and after the fact, like right now, I'm just gonna kind of make sure that lip is completely covered and then I'm gonna go back with my heat gun and swirl that a little bit more. Okay, I'm happy with that. So, and that's, that's what I, I wanted to express to you is see how different these are. These are totally different, but it's the same technique. So that's kind of cool is that you, you get a different look every time and you can kind of see the white mixes in there. It's almost like a galaxy kind of a look. So very cool. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna leave this to cure. Um, and I wait for about an hour before I peel this tape off here at the bottom. So I turn the machine off after about an hour and peel the tape off um, of both of these. Well, I would just peel this off, but do it very carefully. And the reason is, is because I don't touch the resin after an hour, just get the tape off. Because if you leave the tape on for too long, it, it gets stuck in the resin and it's a little harder to get off. You have to kind of use a craft knife and cut it and you know, whatever. So after about an hour, take that tape off, um, but careful not to touch the resin because it's not cured yet. So leave it to spin for about six hours um, and then you're good to take it off. That is not a full cure, that's just a soft cure, but you won't make any um, imprint, impressions or dents in it after about six hours. Um, and then after that, you can leave it um, to dry for another 24 hours for like a hard cure and then it's ready to go. Um, now, quick uh, mention, this is not dishwasher safe. No stainless steel tumblers are dishwasher safe. So you wanna make sure that you hand wash these. Um, so we're gonna let that spin and we're going to, oh, let's see. Okay, so now we're gonna make a coaster. I'm gonna do like a backwards reveal here. This is the finished product because I gotta use this mold. So um, this is what it looks like when it's done, but I'm gonna show you how to make that. It's super easy. So I've got some leftover resin um, in my cup here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix in a, a different powder. This is um, midnight to teal or turquoise, I guess. So um, it looks like it's black, um, but then when it gets uh, heat, it looks like a beautiful turquoise color. So we're gonna put some of this in. And I, this is probably enough that if I, if I weren't teaching a class, I would have multiple molds maybe ready to go just in case I needed that. Um, so we're gonna mix it up and see, you can see because of the chemical reaction, um, there's a little bit of heat in there and now you can see the pretty uh, turquoise color. So that's kind of cool. So again, scraping the sides, getting that all in there. Um, one thing that um, is cool is you can, like the less, uh, powder you use kind of the more it's a little bit more translucent so that's just a thought to keep in mind um, as you do that scraping this up and scraping the bottom um, and we have a lot of different mica powders available at Michaels we have some that don't I mean I know they're not color changing they're just regular colors and they're in a lot of different um, sets that are really beautiful like jewel tones and pastels and um, all kinds of things. So there are a lot of coloring options available. For Holly, can someone yeah. use glitter instead of the mica powder? Um, yes, you can use glitter instead of the mica powder. You totally don't need to color the resin. You can just add glitter into it if you want. So that way it'll sort of be like a little bit clear but with a bunch of um, glitter in it, which looks really awesome. And again, we've got like a ton of um, different colors of glitter in fine or extra fine, um, chunky, super chunky, um, and tons of different colors. And then we have these really beautiful mixes that are new that are really fun to work with. 
Um, so you get have a lot of options with glitter. And Allie, off the top of your head, other than plastic and stainless steel, are there other surfaces that work well with resin? Yes, wood is a great option. Um, stone is another good option, it's like cement, um, that kind of thing. So um, I know people like to press flowers um, like and dry them out and then add those inside resin. Um, so those are some options. People like to cover like table surfaces with the resin and like maybe put some some photos or some memorabilia underneath there and then seal it off with a coat of resin. You know, pretty fabric or whatever you want to cover that table with and then seal it with resin. All right, so that is now ready. Now we're going to add some of this glitter mix, the fairy dust, which is sort of like um, uh, silver, but it's Sorry, I'm trying to multitask and talk at the same time. Um, it's that holographic silver, really cool. So we're just gonna mix in. Um, and you know, how much you put in there is really up to you. Just depends on how much sparkle you want. Um, and you know, again, it's always a good idea to start with less and add more if you need more, because once you put it in there, it's not coming out. Um, one tip as well, and it's a little hard to do in this class because we have a a certain time frame we're working with. But um, one thing I like to do with the glitter is I like to kind of wait closer to the end of the open time when the glitter, um, I'm sorry, when the resin is just kind of starting to, um, to harden just a tad, just thicken up a little bit. Um, and the reason I like to do that is because then your glitter doesn't settle to the bottom. It sort of will stay suspended and, and be a little bit more, um, Hopefully, yeah, you can see that. Okay. All right, so we're just going to pour this in the mold, and I like to start around the sides. Make sure it gets into the sides. So the way I've done it here, this glitter will probably mostly kind of make its way to the bottom of the mold, which will be the, um, you know, the, the top of the coaster eventually. So you can see that this is exactly the same um, powder, same color, um, but it's a totally, you know, this is the cooled look. This is the, the heat because it's chemically reacting with the resin. But when this hardens and cools, it will be this color. And then if you add, say, a hot drink on top of it, it'll transform, which is really awesome. Or maybe you use these outside on your patio. Um, and so when the sun hits them, you get a whole different look. So that's really fun. Um, and so you're just same thing, you're gonna let that sit and cure. One thing I like to do once I get it in there is sort of drop it a couple times just to make sure it's like nice and flat um, and the bubbles make their way to the top. Um, and then I'll, I'll hit it with a shot of heat to get rid of those little air bubbles. And I don't know if you can see, but I can see them popping. Um, and so that really helps just to get a nice smooth cure. And you don't want to get this too close again, maybe four to six inches away. All right, that's good. So um, one thing I did want to mention is I, I have a silicone mat here that protects the base of my tool so drips don't end up on the tool itself. Um, but you can use like a piece of, of wax paper. Um, I've seen people use um, aluminum foil. You can use a plastic sheet, you know, a, a big piece of poster board, whatever, just something to cover your, your tool so it doesn't get um, covered in resin. And again, if you do get it on your machine, like I've got some here and some there, you can take like a razor blade and just kind of scrape it off carefully once it's on there and once it's hard. So um, I think that's pretty much all I have. Um, if there are other questions, I'm happy to answer them. We have some questions for you. Great. So the first question is about what temperature does the heat gun need to be at to work effectively? Okay, so I'm trying to remember what, what this one is. I think this one is at least 500. I would say 500 to 800. So um, 
if you go to, you know, Michael's has a lot of different heat gun options. Any one of the heat guns that they have there at Michael's will work. Hair dryers don't quite get hot enough. So um, you'll get the air with the hair dryer, so it will move your resin around. But to pop those bubbles, you really need quite a bit of heat. So um, a, a hair dryer probably isn't going to pop the bubbles as well as you want them to. Um, but a heat gun will. It'll it'll get hot enough. So good question. And a lot of questions about resin working with glass, like glass jars. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely um, work with resin and glass. So that's another great material to work with. In regard to silicone molds, is there anything with the mold press, the new mold press, that would allow ah. someone to make silicone molds? I was hoping somebody would ask that. I'm so excited about the mold press. Um, so when you're, you're making molds with the mold press, you can use those for resin craft, but you do need to use a mold release. Um, so that, because if you don't, the, it's PETG plastic, that's the type of plastic, and that will bond with the resin. So you won't be able to get your resin out if you don't use some kind of mold release. Mold release comes in liquid and powder form. Um, liquid is usually the best to use for resin craft. And the last question is, if someone were to use a metal tray that has been painted with acrylic paint, can they add resin to that? Um, yes, you can add resin to that. Um, the, the difficult thing with that though is the, is the leveling and curing. So for example, it depends on the, on the shape of your tray. You know, if it's curved like this, the resin's gonna pull at the bottom. Um, so, I honestly, I've, I've not seen, I'm sure there's a way to do it. <laughs> I've not done that to a tray yet. Um, and I've not seen how that's done, but I'm sure there would need to be a way to get that to cure um, without the resin pooling either on the sides or in the middle, you know, the bottom of the tray. Does that make sense? So if you've got a flat surface like a table, um, you can totally do that. Tape off the edges of the table and the resin will, will, you know, you can create a reservoir, but, um, when you're working with a shaped object around object, that's why we have the spinner here so that it, it cures nice and smooth. I'm just not quite sure how to make that happen with a tray, but I'm sure there's a video probably if you search online, somebody's done it. <laughs> and sorry, one more question. Does no the spinner problem. work with other materials other than a tumbler, for example, a vase? Um, yeah, so anything that you can fit on there and you can make that um, that grip pretty thin so I've seen people do like baby bottles um, you know like tum little kid toddler tumblers you know all kinds of different cups we also um, during the holiday season we had an ornament arm so it was just an attachment that you could stick um, the globe ornaments onto and you could resin the outside of those so those are some other options that you could use with this particular machine wonderful those are all the questions I have for you Okay, great. Well, if anyone else doesn't have a, a question that we need to answer, I want to let you know how appreciative I am that you joined me today um, and, and watch this class. Um, and Tumblr making is a lot of fun. Um, I didn't start doing this until a couple years ago, and I'm hooked. I absolutely love it. So give it a try. Um, it's really fun to make great gifts um, and just a great craft to do for yourself. So thanks so much, guys. Have a great day.